Okay, I'm going to give you this demonstration in the Vavi Flexi Capture. I want to show you from a kind of end user's perspective how it works and then also show you behind the scenes so you can see how it, how we work with a document like your uh, Audi fax order. So from a user's perspective, they launched this program here which is Abbey Flexi Capture. Um, it's the administrator station or the operator station and they've really got four options up here scan, recognize, run, export and that's the kind of workflow. So scan could be that you've got a scanner attached to your PC or it could be that we're going to monitor a hot folder or we're just going to load some images so for example if you're receiving faxes, paper based faxes you might have a workstation set up to do this where you're going to have a scanner attached so let's hit the scan button I'm going to use a tiny little Canon scanner and using Twain I could use ISIS hit OK I'm going to scan at 300 dpi grayscale I'm just going to hit the OK button So I've got four samples as part of the sample set you sent me. So Abby is now going to import those images in from the scans. And that, that was quite slow because it's only a 20 page a minute scanner, but you can have as fast or as slow a scanner as you want. And also the processing power of the um, PC is quite relevant because it's doing a lot of recognition work. So what we've got now is um, it's found the first document and it's 97% confident that we found all the items. It's found the second one, the third one will pop up and the fourth one, etc. If we go into one of these, we can see the PO number. It's found it down here. It's found the delivery date. It's found the supplier number. It's not quite comfortable with the zero or the, or the last character. It thinks it's a pound sign. So I'll show you how we overcome that. It's found the Atherton up here. And down here it's found our line items. So we've got code 2506, UH2 aerosol cream, and the quantity. It hasn't found the quantity, so um, there's an issue there. The next line though, we've got 7687, barbecue spare ribs, quantity of one, etc. etc. Now we can adjust the thresholding on all of these kind of fields to give us more scope by going into the properties of it behind the scenes. Um, if we go into the next one, We've got a lot more line items here, so they've all been picked up. Okay, now typically what a user would do is multiple select everything they found and hit the run verification button. Then what we get is this screen here where it's showing you what it sees and what it thinks. And we would go, right, you're correct there, it's a zero, but that's a four. And I would confirm the field. That there is actually a two. That's fine. That's and creamy, so I just slide my keyboard along. Fine with that, thick and creamy again. And we can actually put dictionaries in, so if you're getting a lot of verification of thick and creamy and it's always coming up as an eight, we could put that in as a kind of, you know, one of the, the things it could uh, treat more, that, that would sort of come up with less recognition or less verification requirements. Okay, so that was all done. So we did four there in no time at all. The next step is to export it. Uh, I haven't set the export settings yet, but what we would typically do is use a script to export it to CSV in a format that you need. So I'd need to know exactly how you want your uh, fields to be set up. If I go behind the scenes here, we can see that um, each of the fields, the sort of static fields, then we have what's called a table uh, or a repeating group. So I can go into, say, the details of the store here, uh, and I can say that it needs verification, which one of the tick boxes under verification needs verification. I've got a threshold there of 40%. Um, we can also go into the data type to say what we're expecting. So, for example, with stores, Atherton, um, or the sort of subset, we, we can actually create a list of um, uh, sort of, you know, stores um, that it could choose from to make it sort of you know the verification easier okay so how did I find this information that's the next step how did I set this up well there's another program we use called the flexi layout studio and there's our sample and it's very s well to me it's simple but for, you, for, for somebody looking on it might be slightly more complicated but let's let's sort of take you through it the first thing I want to do is find some labels so I wanted to find the word delivery date 
once I found that word on the page and I can say it's nearest to the top of the screen or whatever but it doesn't matter if that fax came in skewed or if Audi stores changed the layout um, and put the delivery date somewhere else it would still find it so the same is true for the supplier number if I test the element there and the PO number for example these are just labels once I found the label I might um, I'm, I'm going to look for the values so if I go into the date and test that it's it's got several choices the, the number one choice is the delivery date that one there um, down here it's next to the label delivery date but there's some other dates on the page so it's kind of it gives us options but it chooses the best one so the one we want is you know if you find the word delivery date that's the date we want it doesn't matter where it is on the page we just want that one um, the supplier number for example if I go into test that element there's various options that it's coming up with um, there's the label and then if we go into the details of that we into the properties of it we're saying it's to the right of the supplier number um, and it's below the supplier number and above the bottom of the supplier number so effectively we're narrowing it right down to where it can be so if I was to go right click and match and click on supplier number it's only got that choice there really it's saying it's got it's got to be to the left of the supplier number and also in the properties of that I can say that it's actually I'm looking for anything or I could say it's a four digit number for example if we knew it's specifically going to be a, a a four or five digit number we could use a regular expression say okay it's going to be a number between three and five characters long there it is okay so now the table's slightly more interesting um, again what we do is we we give it some headings like code description qu uh, quantity unit I also found the word um, estimated pallets or total pallets and I'm using that as the bottom so using these labels I found the top of the table and the bottom of it and then I s I've got the sort of kind of values that I want the, disc um, the description the quantity if I wanted to find anything else in the table I can do and it's actually what's called a repeating group so it finds it multiple times on the page uh, which helps us you know when we're using a document like this which has got a table three times repeated it's really easy just getting the line items out of it so once we've kind of set all this up if we wanted to change any of it we would we would make the change and then we would export it off what's called like a, it's called the flexible template we export it off and then behind the scenes in the, this section here I import it I go tools update and I, and I bring it in again and refresh it so that's it so if we wanted to add in a second document from one of your suppliers at the moment we have this one here which I can rename to Audi but it could be that we wanted to duplicate that and have a second store so if I pasted it um, and I would rename that to let's say that's Lidl for example and all I would do then so I'd have two I've got Audi where's my little one gone and Lidl um, and then I would just um, find something in the header I would find the word Audi in the header or Lidl in the header uh, to identify which document it is so we can build it up over time so no matter what you scan through um, or what's received by fax there should be a template that it will recognize and know what to find because the chances are Lidl's one they're going to have things slightly differently here so that's the overview um, the end result is that we can export the documents off into a CSV file and you can pick them up and we should be able to get the verification the accuracy um, sort of very very high uh, this is an hour's work I've put into this to get this recognition so you know if we sort of sold you the software with a day's consultancy or a day's setup time or use that time for training so you know how to use it we should be able to get some really fabulous results okay help that hope that's helpful